What if history repeats itself? Could we be facing the end of civilization as we know it? What could happen if the food runs out? The world's population hits nine billion. Grain consumption is at its highest levels. Global temperatures are the hottest on record. Weather patterns around the world have become unpredictable. Cyclones in Bangladesh, record snowstorms in London, the worst ever drought in Iowa. The plague of climate change is here. News organizations worldwide are reporting global food shortages. In Cambodia, there are also reports of hoarding. At the world's food trading center, rice and corn prices have climbed to record highs. As more and more speculations rule the market, trading is at its highest levels ever. The markets spiral out of control. As governments curb exports to prevent unrest. The world is slipping slowly into chaos. Soaring prices push back 40 million people into hunger. Lower crop yields give rise to fear of food disaster. Even the U.S. is not spared. The situation here, at the heart of America's capital, is grim. More and more Americans are finding themselves on tight budgets, reporting an increase in the numbers of the food lines, and in some cases, outright hunger. In Asia, people start to gather to protest the price hike. They are angry and starving. These farmers have been denied access to food. They storm this rice warehouse in a desperate attempt to feed their families. food experts have been warning us about is here. Tens of thousands are dying of starvation each week. Countries are no longer able to grow enough food. Riots are escalating worldwide. The world's food security collapses. Governments are faced with their worst nightmare to protect their borders from potential food wars and protect their own people from each other. After people hits home, your home. It's the dramatic new season of Life After People. New episodes every Monday night at 8 on History. Discover the hidden cities of Beijing. I literally feel like I'm in a war zone. Malaysia. It just keeps going. Indonesia. <laughs> Taiwan. 
Working up the sweat. Hidden Cities, Friday, 10 p.m. on History. The events of 2050 could just be a nightmare scenario. With food still on our plates, how concerned should we really be about a predicted world without food? Could it be a real possibility? Or is there a way out? There is, I think, growing realization in the world that this is a, a, a very, very, very important issue that's, that faces mankind. It is not something that can be solved by individuals or by individual countries, that the, the whole the world will have to work together. That is something where we can all play uh, a role. If we are aware of the problem and if we work together, then we can find a solution. Rice is life. Rice is life, not just for those who eat it, but also for those who grow it, farmers like Prayong. And in the face of a world whose rice harvests are under the threat of climate change, we need to find solutions, fast. In the Philippines, a team of scientists at the International Rice Research Institute are racing against time to develop new strains of rice that will grow in our ever-changing climate. Never before has so much been expected so quickly from agriculture. Can rice crops rise to this challenge? To protect the future, these scientists first have to look at the past. This gene bank could hold the key seed to rice's climate challenges. Heat, drought, salinity, and flooding. In this sub-zero freezer, nearly every variety of rice is kept on ice. So we have here the collection of 109,000 varieties. The copy of it that we call the active collection because it's someone that we're using for research on current problems. With 109,000 varieties, we, we can't keep large quantities. This is all we have of a single variety. Half a kilogram, but when you multiply by 100,000, we've got 50 tons of rice in here. Out of the 50 tons of rice in this gene bank, one of them may hold the answer to keeping rice crops alive in a changing world. Every time a new problem comes up that we need to address, we've got to think again. How are we going to make the best variety, the best technology, the best farming for this problem? And the starting point is always to go back to the old varieties that have traits that you can't find in the best varieties available today. If we are able to continue doing that research to, to maintain the flexibility to deal with future problems, then it should be okay. Then, then I'm sure we can find solutions. These seeds could help turn common rice varieties into new solutions. To find out, these scientists first need to know how these plants will survive in the field. In paddies around the institute, teams are testing various rice strains against their four biggest climate challenges. In the future, we could be looking at a hotter atmosphere. Heat has a big impact on how rice grows. Warmer temperatures can make rice plants sterile. The work in this field simulates what the temperature will be like in 40 years. These are th ceramic heaters, uh, near-infrared heaters, that when they are turned on, it's going to uh, stream out near infrared waves uh, and that heat the air that is above this rice canopy and basically maintain a constant uh, higher temperature. And so this allows us to study how they grow, their performance, yeah, and allows us also 
uh, to check whether we may have already varieties or we may be breeding new varieties that can stand this higher temperature better than the current ones. So it's a screening tool, it's a research tool, uh, and that allows us to identify new candidate varieties for the future, hopefully already uh, the first ones available to rice farmers all over the world. In another paddy, Dr. Siraj is finding key genomes in more drought-resistant rice strains in the hope that a strand can be created to withstand severe droughts in the future. On a global scale, just to give you an idea, in, in Asia alone, we estimate around 23 million hectares of drought-prone uh, areas of rice. In that case, you know, the, the problem of drought is that it really knocks down the yield to almost nothing in some areas. So it has very tremendous and severe consequences on the livelihoods of people. This is a Reno shelter that we're using for uh, phenotyping drought resistance in rice. This allows us to simulate a drought situation even during a wet season. We measure uh, photosynthesis, we measure roots, we measure plant growth, and uh, basically what it allows us to do is to study in more detail the rice plants and understand what are the components and how to improve those components for drought resistance. We are able to, ge to generate uh, GM rice that includes those genes for drought resistance and then we can test them. Uh, successfully in uh, confined environments to develop rice resistant to drought for the future. We were able to find uh, major segments in genome that are regulating the drought resistance in rice. And, and we have a lot of hope that this will enable us to develop adequate technologies for drought resistance in the future. The greatest ruins in the world lay at one man's feet. A hundred thousand years of history are there to explore. Follow this archaeologist and unearth a world hidden to this day. Show me the mummy. Join Zahi Hawass. Chasing Mummies. Every Wednesday, 10 p.m. on History. The day the Japanese Red Army stormed KL. They wanted about seven GRA members in jail in Japan to be released. I was convinced that they had placed bombs in the Swedish embassy. Two people with a gun pointed at me. Investigators and former hostages take you back to 1975 KL Under Siege in Prime Investigation Asia. Premieres December 9th, Thursday night at 10 on CI. Follow the lead. North Vietnam cannot defeat the United States. We're dealing with Hitler revisited. Their decisions have shaped the world. The objective was to kill as many of the enemy as possible. Bill Clinton may have sent American troops into more places than any other president. Leading the most powerful military force on Earth. Your time is up. Commander in Chief, Tuesday 9 p.m. from December 7th on History. In 40 years, rising sea levels could push salt water inland, devastating rice growing deltas. A race is on to find which strands are more tolerant to higher saline levels. If there is no salinity, the plant will grow like this one. And the plant is very happy, nice root system, just like in the field. But when we introduce salinity, the plant will look like this. So this is a tolerant line, and this is a sensitive line. So the sensitive ones will die, the tolerant ones will live. So this is the one that live, then we will take them and produce seeds out of them. 
But rising sea levels doesn't just mean too much salt in the soil. Rice's biggest threat is flooding. As the glaciers melt, the low-lying river deltas, the areas where most of Asia's rice is grown, could be facing disaster. But scientists at this institute offer a glimmer of hope. They have found a rice variety that can grow despite being submerged in water. The first generation of submergence tolerant varieties we developed here, uh, we developed it by introducing a gene, we call it submergence tolerance gene, or sub-1 gene. And this gene can protect the plants for about two weeks of complete flooding. And we are seeing a huge impact. And it's just amazing the stories that you hear from the farmers, where they were not able to grow rice before, and now they have varieties that can survive. The 30 million hectares of rice that would be affected if the glaciers melt could survive to feed us thanks to this sub-1 gene. It strengthens the security of a crop faced with multiple climate challenges. science may have found a way to help rice fight climate change. It does not address the fact that we are dependent on just three crops for our survival. This dependence could be making us vulnerable. Should we go back to our roots and diversify again? What we need is an agroecological approach to production and to the vagaries of climate change. This is how you deal with the uncertainty of climate change, by diversifying more, not by diversifying less. With a bigger variety of crops, we will be better insured against climate change. Is this a way of farming that could sustain the world's ever-growing population? This village thinks it can. It is advocating an alternative to the agricultural system we have today. They've gone back to old-style pre-industrial farming. ทิ้งกระเสบชีวภาพเราก็เน้นเอาสิ่งมีชีวิตตัวตั้งคือแทนที่เราจะใช้สารเคมีหรือว่าสิ่งที่มีชีวิตเนี่ยมาเป็นต